Hi guys, I'm Snehal and I'm here today to talk to you about the basics of uh, taking your insulin through a syringe. Uh, so I'm a type 1 diabetic since uh, 18 years now. And uh, before we move to the actual procedure of how you take your insulin shot with the syringe, there are like a couple of things uh, I would like to talk about. Uh, so this is my uh, Actrapid vial and this is my syringe. So at all times your insulin vial or your cartridges need to be kept in the fridge. Uh, by fridge I mean uh, where we keep your vegetables not the freezer and uh, before you take your insulin shot it is important that the insulin uh, is brought to the room temperature uh, so it is better that you take out the vial from the fridge uh, maybe about 20 to 30 minutes before you are planning to take your insulin shot uh, so once uh, the insulin is at room temperature uh, you are good to take your shot uh, after that, I would like to talk about the second point, uh, which is uh, the two types of insulin that we have. Uh, one is like a clear type and the other would be like a cloudy type. So the bottle that I have is Actrapid and it is, it is a clear type of insulin. Like as you can see, it doesn't have any texture or any other components inside of it. And uh, I do not have an insulin tart because I do not take it any, anymore. Uh, but uh, when you have an insulatart bottle, uh, which is like a cloudy type of insulin, so once you take it out, you can see like certain components of that insulin are like settled at the bottom. So in that case, uh, for any cloudy type of insulin that you are taking, it is necessary to shake the bottle properly. Uh, you do not need to shake it vigorously, uh, just a simple shaking motion of like, like doing it in this way. Uh, would help to mix the components properly uh, so that uh, your insulin mix is ready. Uh, also another thing is like a lot of people they usually mix their Actrapid and Insulatart together like your clear insulin and the cloudy insulin together. So in that case uh, your clear insulin needs to go in first followed by your cloudy insulin. Uh, do not reverse this uh, insulin uh, textures. So uh, once again, uh, the clear insulin goes in first, followed by the cloudy insulin. Uh, after that, another important thing to know is that, uh, so we have these two kind of syringes. The one that I have is the red capped syringe. We also have a syringe which is uh, orange capped. So the difference between the two syringes is that uh, the red capped is 40 IU syringe and uh, the orange capped is for 100 IU. So, uh, it, it depends on the insulin that you are taking. So, Actrapid is like, uh, here you can see, uh, here it's mentioned that it is 40 IU. So, so for with 40 IU insulin, you are supposed to use the red cap syringe, which is the 40 IU syringe. And for insulin like Lantus, which is 100 IU, for that you need to take uh, orange cap syringe. So, do not interchange the syringes that can lead to a lot of problems. Uh, so, it's better that you uh, keep them separately like your red capped syringe with the 40 IU insulin and the orange capped syringe with your 100 IU insulin. So that in no case uh, you, uh, you can switch the syringes by mistake also. So, uh, that's there. Other than that, um, I would like to talk about the places and your body wherein you can take your insulin shot. So, there are like three places wherein you can take your shot. The first is your arm area, uh, your tummy and your thighs. So, the reason that we take here is like these areas are fleshy and they would not hurt your internal uh, blood vessels or capillaries. So, when you take, if you are planning to take it on your hands, uh, you do not need to start right from your shoulder. Like keep a three finger distance from your shoulder and the area below it is like uh, available for you to take your insulin shot. Uh, when you talk about your tummy, uh, leave like a gap of two fingers from your navel on all the four sides and beyond that you can take your insulin shot. Similarly on the thighs, uh, from the start of the thigh you need to keep a gap of three fingers and below that you can take your insulin shot. So we will move to uh, how do we uh, take the insulin uh, in the syringe. Uh, when, whenever you are starting to take stuff, as we talked about, uh, the first thing is like the insulin needs to be at room temperature. Once that is done, you need to be careful when you are taking out the cap from the syringe. So if you are not careful or you take it out with the force, it may damage the needle. So as you can see, the needle is very tiny. So before that, like uh, since this is like vacuum packed, uh, you need to 
put in some air inside the vial before you take take out some insulin so the amount of the air that you put into the vial is exactly the number of units that your uh, insulin shot consists of so let's say like uh, my insulin shot is of 8 units so i will take 8 units of air in the syringe just like that as you can see that it's 8 units uh, just insert the needle in the vial and just press the air inside once you press the air inside just reverse it like this and even before that before you pull in the insulin in the, in the syringe uh, what you can do is you can just press the piston of the uh, syringe so that if there, if there is any remnant air inside the syringe it will be moved out so take a look at this did you see that the air bubbles have come out and now you are good to go ahead and take your insulin shot like pull in the insulin so as I said my insulin shot is of 8 units I am going to take 8 units here and with that uh, there can be a possibility that you have some air bubbles inside your syringe while pulling in the insulin so in that case what I prefer to do is like take half a unit of insulin extra so just take a little bit of insulin extra and take it out and you can just tap the air bubble so that the air bubble moves to the top of the syringe and then just press very lightly so that the extra insulin is removed and along with that the air bubble is also removed so now uh, your insulin shot is ready and we'll go ahead and take it so I'm going to take it on my stomach and I'll show you how do you move a location in your body. You're planning to take the uh, insulin shot. Uh, you have to ensure that it is clean. So either you take your insulin shot after you've taken a bath or you can use a cotton pad and uh, uh, surgical spirit and clean the area. Uh, I have already done that. So I'll just show you. So what you can do is you can pinch the area so that the fleshy part like the fats underneath your skin are pulled up and you just have to insert the syringe at a 90 degree angle now since this, the needle is very sharp you do not need to uh, put like you know you do not need to insert it at any other angle a basic 90 degree angle is enough so just pinch the area and insert the needle So once you have inserted it, just lightly pull the piston so that the insulin is inserted inside your body. Once the entire insulin is inside your body, just wait for a few seconds before you remove the syringe from your body. So just release the pinch, wait for a few seconds and then remove it. After that, you can again just press the piston again so that if there's any remnant insulin inside it is pulled off see and then uh, you can just place the cap back on uh, just be careful with it so that you do not damage the needle so this is the entire procedure by which you can take your insulin with the syringe uh, another thing that I would like to talk about uh, when we are on this topic is uh, side rotation so it is very important that you rotate, you continuously keep on rotating the site wherever you are taking your insulin shots. So probably what you can do is like maybe morning you are taking on the right side of your tummy, afternoon you take on the left side of the tummy and then probably move to your thighs or like keep a distance of like uh, two fingers each between the uh, places wherever you are taking your shots. So what what happens is if you like keep on pricking at the same point continuously is that the tissues under that uh, area uh, harden inside so this condition is called as lipohypertrophy and uh, this hampers us in a way that uh, if we keep on continuously pricking at the same site wherein the tissues have been hardened uh, the absorption of insulin may not be proper so to avoid that uh, we have to keep on changing the uh, sites wherever we are taking the insulin. Uh, so lastly, we talk about uh, how you can carry your insulin with you. So if you are uh, 
uh, traveling for a shorter duration or uh, like uh, going to your office or something and since your office is like air conditioned or you have a refrigerator over there uh, so you can just probably keep it in a pouch like this and uh, you're good to go so this is how I like to carry my insulin but for long durations like uh, longer travel durations wherein you may not have access to a refrigerator or a uh, uh, you know the temperatures are high and you just cannot keep it with you so in that case you can go ahead and use this uh, ice pack uh, you can uh, find this very easily at your local uh, chemists or pharmacies and uh, you need to just uh, keep it in the freezer for about three to four hours before you're planning to uh, travel or planning to carry this with you so once this is hardened uh, you can just keep it in your uh, in the same pouch when you're carrying your insulin. So that was all I had to talk about uh, on how you can take your insulin with the syringe. Uh, so if you like the video, do not forget to like, comment, share and subscribe. Uh, if you have any other ideas or uh, any other suggestions on what kind of videos you would want us to shoot. So do let us know in the comments below. And uh, thank you so much. I'll see you next time.